Good morning, everyone. As we begin week three of this uh, new format, thank you for inviting me into your homes to share a message that I pray will be an encouragement in these challenging times. By way of announcements, uh, the church, just so you know, is closed, and both Bonnie and I are working from our homes as we endeavor uh, to do our part in, in planking the curve, as our prime minister explained it. And I encourage you to continue to pray for all of the people, including a number of people from our own church family who are working in various capacities in the hospital and the community serving on the front lines of this virus. Thank you also to all of you who are doing your part by staying at home. For those of you who may need food or other items picked up, please call the church as I have a, a few people who have volunteered to help pick up items for you and they'll bring them and leave them on your doorstep. Our online prayer meeting is continuing on Thursday afternoons at 1.30. Uh, if you're having problems, and I've heard some people are having problems getting connected, uh, if you don't, or if you don't have a computer, uh, there will be an option to call into the meeting just using your telephone. And I'll provide that in my letter that will be sent out first part of next week. If you have any other needs, please call me on the church phone, which is on call forward to my cell phone, uh, or you can call my cell, of course, directly. Our scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It's called the parable of the persistent widow. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while. But finally, he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman's driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Let's just pray for a minute. Gracious Father, thank you for this opportunity to open up your word. And I pray that you would speak into our hearts and our lives and encourage uh, your people. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're going to conclude our series on prayer where we'll look at this parable of the persistent widow. Jesus teaches us what I would suggest is the most important principle of all regarding prayer. He teaches us the key to praying with power. In these days of uncertainty where our world is being turned upside down, it's important that we understand our responsibility to pray with power. In this parable, this story, we have a ruthless judge who fears neither God or man and a widow who comes to him repeatedly with the request, grant me justice. For a long time, he refuses to consider her request, but finally in exasperation, as I just read, he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then Jesus said in the same way, verse 7, Don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Here's the principle. The key to praying with power, the key to getting results in prayer is keep at it. Pray with persistence. If you're asking God for anything, this is the most important principle involved in your prayer. And this is exactly where we most often drop the ball when it comes to praying. Too often, we pray for a while, but 
when we don't get the answer we want quick enough, we, we tend to give up. We tell ourselves, you know, it must not have been God's will. Or we tell ourselves, maybe this prayer thing doesn't work after all. Or we tell ourselves, maybe God doesn't care enough about me to answer my prayers. He'll answer prayers for others, but obviously not for me. The fact is, none of these things are true. But you know, we fool ourselves into believing them simply because it's easier to give up than it is to keep on praying. God answers prayer, but he doesn't answer every prayer immediately. There are some prayers that he answers only when we pray persistently. Why is that? Why does God want us to pray with persistence? Well, today we're going to look at three reasons, three ways that that really you benefit from persistent prayer. First of all, persistent prayer keeps you in God's presence. Just like the widow who, who kept coming back to the judge day after day, standing before him asking for justice, persistent prayer places us in God's presence day after day after day. <clears throat> There's something more important to God than answering your prayer. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants you to know him intimately. He wants you to be your best friend, your constant companion. Persistent prayer helps you develop and nurture your relationship with God. Read a story about a newlywed couple and how they had met. Their names were Kurt and Diane, and Diane was a realtor, and Kurt was looking for a house. Diane said, I had to show him at least a a dozen houses before he found one that he was willing to buy. We were looking at houses together two or three times a week, and we eventually fell in love. Fortunately for me, Kirk doesn't make quick decisions. And Kirk said, fortunately for me, Diane doesn't give up. Looking at properties together kept them in each other's presence long enough for their relationship to develop. It works the same with persistent prayer. If you pray about something every day, that means you're spending time alone with God every day. And the more time you spend with God, the closer you get to God. That's why Jesus said in verse 6 that we're to cry out to God day and night. It's why the psalmist says in Psalm 55 verse 17, Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. God wants to be the central focus of your life. The purpose of prayer is not to get God to do things for you. It's to teach you to depend on him as your only source. Persistent prayer keeps us in God's presence. Secondly, persistent prayer helps you define and refine your requests. Now, I firmly believe that anything you want, you should pray about first, anything at all. Does that mean you'll get it? No, of course not. But this is what will happen. As you pray for something earnestly and persistently over a period of time, you'll find that your request gets refined and redefined according to God's will. In other words, if you're asking for the wrong thing, God will let you know. You may begin to pray for one thing, but as you continue to pray over a period of time, and as you continue to seek God's will on the matter, your request will be transformed into a request that is pleasing to God. Let me share with you a story just to illustrate my point. A man was talking to his pastor one day, and he said he was tired of living hand to mouth. And so he began to pray that he would receive either a raise in his salary or a better paying job. He came up for a performance review at work, and he was told, even though he was doing a a great job, that there was no money in the company for raises that year. So he began to send out resumes. And after sending out dozens, 
he had not received a single offer that was better than what he already had. But he continued to pray. And he found that his prayer began to change. During this time, God began to speak to him about several areas in which he was spending too much money. And over a period of time, his requests changed from give me more money to make me a better steward. He said that he was able to reduce his expenses by $300 a month by cutting out unnecessary things such as extra programming on his television, a gym membership that he rarely used, uh, changed his calling plans on his cell phone, he began eating out less, and so on. And also, for all of his adult life, he had had a car payment. Every two or three years, he would trade in his old car and get a new one. Well, this year, he decided to pay off the car and keep it, freeing up yet another $400 a month. He said, my income hasn't changed, but it's like I got an $8,000 a year raise. It began with a request for more money, but over time, the request was refined to, Lord, make me a better steward. If God had answered his prayers immediately and he had been given a raise at work, it would have been just a matter of weeks before he was in over committed and he was uh, over his head as he'd always been. Instead, because he prayed persistently, his request was redefined into what he really needed to pray for. And God was able to do a great work in his life. When we first begin praying for something, we might not be praying for exactly the right thing or maybe for exactly the right reasons. Persistent prayer improves our prayers. It helps us get on the right track. It's hard, if not impossible, to pray persistently for something frivolous. The longer you pray, the more you realize, you know, this is silly. This isn't God's will. Conversely, when you're praying for the right things, the longer you pray, the more convinced you become of God's will. And the more determined you become to keep praying for it. You know, I feel that in the midst of this pandemic, as I'm praying persistently, my prayers are changing. I've been praying for God to intervene and wipe out this virus to give us a cure, a vaccine, or, or, or something. Along with this, I've been praying for protection for me and my family and, and for each of you. This continues to be my persistent prayer. But here's what I'm noticing. As I pray, God is showing me how he is at work in the midst of all of this. He is prompting me to be obedient. To listen, for example, to the authorities when they say, stay at home. He's showing me how through this people are being drawn to him as they pray for help. He also seems to be saying, remember, I'm in control. I've not abandoned you or anyone who calls on my name. He is affirming that regardless of what is happening and whatever might come, his promise holds true. He will never leave us or abandon us. He will journey with us through the valleys. We can place all of our hope in his promises to us. So my prayers are being changed, realigned and refined by spending time in his presence, being persistent in my prayers for this pandemic. Persistent praying helps you define and refine your request so that you're ultimately asking for something that is consistent with God's will for your life. Thirdly, persistent prayer proves your faith. Jesus ended this parable by saying, verse 8, when the Son of Man comes, will he find uh, faith on the earth? In other words, will he find people praying persistently? Persistent prayers demonstrate faith. Earlier in the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus was teaching on this very same subject, he said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Luke 11, 
verses 9 and 10. Last week, I mentioned Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, where he said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. And last week, I said the verbs that Jesus used here, ask, seek, and knock, were spoken in, in the present indicative active voice, which means that it's an ongoing action. In other words, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. If you believe God will answer your prayer, you prove your faith by continuing to ask. I used to work in the retail industry, and on occasion, someone would come to the door either before we opened in the morning or after we closed at night, and we'd be in the back, and they would start knocking on the door or the glass. They would knock, and they'd wait a minute. They would knock again and again, Then they would pound harder and harder until finally the boss said, go and see what they want. And when we'd open the door, they'd say, I knew you'd come. Maybe there's a lesson in this. Maybe we need to learn to pray like the person who persistently knocks at the door after the store is closed. When we have refined our request and are asking for the right things, God will answer our prayers. Jesus said so, verses 7 and 8, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Wait a minute. Does that say quickly? then why do we have to pray and pray and pray and ask and ask and ask seemingly forever? Well, the answer is simple. Quickly is determined by God's timetable, not our own. Quickly doesn't mean we can snap our fingers and and God will speed up the process. It means that God will answer our prayers on time. He's not late. He's never in a hurry but he's never late. The key to praying with power is found in praying with persistence. When you pray persistently, you remain in the presence of God and you are able to define and refine your requests according to his will and you prove your faith. Persistent prayer takes prayer out of the plan B category, the last ditch effort category, and it puts it where it belongs as the top priority in your life. Since early February, we've been talking about prayer as the ultimate lifestyle, and we began this series with this verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. And that's where we end it. Pray and pray and keep on praying. Persist in prayer. Make it your lifestyle. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I thank you for this word and I thank you for uh, this passage of scripture and this story that Jesus gave about the importance of being persistent in our prayer. And Lord, help us to be a people that is persistent to pray, to ask, to seek, to knock, And thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our lives. And Lord, we pray today for all of the people, um, I think specifically of those people that are serving on those front lines with this pandemic. I pray for your protection over them. I pray for our own church family members that are involved in this. I pray for protection for them, but for all the doctors and and nurses and staff and, and custodians and all those people that are trying to help. We pray for them and we pray encouragement for them. And we thank you for this church family. I thank you for each one. And and Lord, we miss seeing each other in person. But you are gracious and you are with us. And Lord, we thank you for technology where we can see one another on a screen or we can pick up our phone and call and have a conversation and catch up with one another. We just thank you for this time in which we live and your presence in our lives. 
I ask you would be with, with uh, each prayer request, each need that each person has. And I pray that you would spur us on to be faithful, to look for opportunities, even when we're staying at home, opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others. And we give you permission to make a difference in our lives as well. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.